At Vertigrow, we aim to revolutionise the farming industry with high yield and efficiency vertical farming technology. Vertigrow was formed in September 2013 by a group of young and innovative engineers looking to provide a real solution to the future global problems facing the farming industry. The core team of six comprises of the following members. Howard Cox, Project Manager. Greg Findlay, Project Secretary. Matthew Ellinger, Structural Engineer. Russell Jackman, CAD Engineer. Owen Allen, Mechanical Engineer and Richard Lewis, a geotechnical engineer. Each member of the team had their own key responsibilities and was fully involved in the project from conception to design completion. The Vertigrow Vertical Farm is a high yield and efficiency farming system which is capable of producing roughly 12 million plants a year within its 5,000 square meter growing footprint. That's about 500 times as much yield as a conventional farm with the same footprint area and to grow the same amount of plants, you would need a farmed area of 2.5 million square metres. Additionally, the plants do not require any pesticides, herbicides or other harmful additives, which would be needed if the plants were to be grown in a normal farm. The vast majority of the nutrients for the hydroponics are provided by the Nile tilapia fish, which provide an added benefit of producing roughly 7,300 kilograms of whole fish every month. The vertical farm uses water very efficiently by utilising a primarily closed system which consumes 92% less water than a traditional agriculture farm would. The farm utilises two integrated renewable energy systems to meet its power requirements, a biogas plant and a small scale solar tower. The vertical farm site has an integrated building management system which monitors and controls various systems throughout the site. The farm has been designed with Briam scheme in mind. This creates a low carbon design with high energy efficiency and low environmental impact. Additionally, the farm has been designed to be built and used in a socially responsible and ethically considerate manner. The farm design is also adaptable and scalable, allowing it to be exported to other locations with different conditions and needs. The vertical farm is located in Qatar, roughly 30 kilometers west of the capital of Doha. All aspects of the farm have been outlined at a conceptual stage and detailed designs have been completed for the building structure and aquaponics water system in accordance with all relevant European and British standards. The vertical farm site comprises of three main structures, the vertical farm, biogas facility and the solar tower facility. The chosen site location is far enough away from Doha to minimise traffic travelling on already congested roads but still close enough to ensure that produce remains fresh during distribution. Ecological impact was also a key criteria for choosing the site and an area with little to no animal or plant life was chosen to minimise the environmental impact of the site. The vertical farm is a composite structure utilising concrete, steel and glass, with the structure standing 64 metres tall across seven storeys. The ground floor has a number of uses including housing, a large office, conference room and systems control zone, welfare facilities, the aquaculture system, aquaponic water system, a cold storage room and a distribution centre. The hydroponics along with the harvesting and replanting centre are located in the six storey octagonal steel frame structure on top of the ground floor. This structure is clad in specialised glazing that maximises sunlight entering the building whilst insulating it from the high temperatures that the farm is exposed to in the Qatari desert. All sections of the structure will be prefabricated and brought to site for ease of construction, including all steel and concrete columns, beams, connections and slabs. Only the foundations are required to be set on site. The vertical farm has five levels dedicated to innovative rotary hydroponic growing systems, which are estimated to be able to produce 12 million plants annually. When compared with traditional agriculture, the vertigrow hydroponics are 500 times as productive for the same ground footprint. The specialised hydroponic system also only requires 8% of the water consumption that traditional irrigated aquaculture uses. This is primarily due to the fact that traditional agriculture 
loses vast quantities of input water to evaporation, runoff and soil absorption. The aquaculture is a key part of the vertical farm as it provides the nutrients required by the plants of the hydroponics, as well as a source of protein from harvesting the fish within it. The aquaculture contains approximately 76,000 Nile tilapia fish in total, and due to their six month growth time they are split between six separate growth cycles in order to provide monthly produce. The aquaculture also uses stock splitting with the fish housed in 12 separate tanks based on their age to allow optimum stocking densities to be used as they grow. The juvenile fish for the stage 1 growth tanks will be provided by an in-house brood stock of 22 fish. The aquaponics water system connects the water systems of the hydroponics and aquaculture in order to facilitate the mutually beneficial relationship between them. It also provides water treatment needed to maintain the necessary water quality, primarily by removing and processing waste and oxygenating the water. Any solid waste removed from the water is also recycled by the biogas facility. After treatment, two thirds of the water is pumped directly back to the aquaculture in order to maintain the high flow rate required for optimum fish growth and health. The remaining third of the water is pumped up to the hydroponics on floors two to six to feed the plants. And once the water has passed through the hydroponics, it is returned to the aquaculture tanks. The vertical farm's large energy requirements are met by sustainable power, which is provided by solar tower and biogas facilities in order to minimise the environmental impact of the structure. The biogas facility utilises local recycled waste and organic waste from the farm to generate electricity, further minimising the impact of the farm. This also provides heat energy and carbon rich fumes which enrich the hydroponics growing environment. Meanwhile, the solar tower utilises the heat of the sun to boil steam and power turbines which generate electricity. Cold storage is provided on site to keep produce fresh before it is distributed to the nearby city of Doha to supply residents with locally grown leafy greens and vegetables. Local distribution improves the quality of produce whilst reducing the carbon footprint associated with exporting produce internationally. The project will take a total of 47 months to complete, with construction being completed after 25 months and the commissioning and testing of the farm beginning. Initial stocking of the aquaculture and hydroponics will begin after 28 months with the farm reaching full operating capacity within a further 6 months. The needs of the stakeholder will vary depending on the location, though with respect to Qatar these include a secure source of produce moving forward an innovative and improved method of farming, heavily reduced consumption of water, the ability to farm in the hostile local conditions, an acceptable rate of return, and a tailored design and implementation strategy. A SWOT analysis was undertaken to identify the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the project moving forward. The strengths include 500 times annual yield compared to the equivalent traditional farm footprint area, 92% less water consumption than traditional agriculture, the absence of any herbicides or pesticides, 50% reduction in nutrient usage, the reliability of crop production, and all year round production in any environment. The weaknesses include, there's no previous example of a similar farm on such a scale, high initial cost of each farm, the returns on investment are not high enough to attract profit driven investment, and high energy requirements. The opportunities for the project include, future expansion of existing vertical farms based on success. Experience allowing improvements to the farm design. Through changes in demand, more profitable crops could be identified and produced instead. And global expansion. Threats to the project include it is heavily dependent on outside investors. A global increase in food production leading to its reduced cost would affect profits. 
the development of a more effective design could arise as competition. The total cost of the build will be £95.4 million over the three years, with the annual running cost of the farm being £419,000. With an annual turnover of £17 million, the farm repays the investment in just eight years from the initial investment, which equates to an internal rate of return of 10%. The potential sources of funding are shown here. The project proposed is the first of its kind and with every new project undertaken, the farm will be adapted to meet the needs of the local community and improve from experience. The future potential of the farm is vast. The customizable design means that it can be easily adapted to a variety of locations, with the greatest benefits to be gained from implementing the vertical farm in areas where arable land is extremely scarce. We propose to build a vertical farm in Qatar, which is capable of producing 12 million plants and 87.6 tonnes of fish annually from a footprint area of just 5,000 square metres. This will be done with water savings of 92% compared to traditional aquaculture and also being powered entirely by renewable energy. Vertigrow. Growing the future.